All right, folks, once again, we're back. It's uh, 2.40 here in San Diego, 2.42 and 5.42 elsewhere, in, at least on the East Coast and some other version of 42 in, in the time zones in between. <laughs> and I'm very pleased to welcome Ron Reed. Ron is the executive producer and I believe co-founder, essentially the founder of the South by Southwest EDU. Of the EDU piece, of the EDU yeah. piece yes, right. yes, sir. Yeah, they were doing something else and you, you essentially gave them an extension. Yeah, that's right. Bring it into that's education. Right. That's great, Ron. Thanks very much for joining us. Sure. I've been fortunate to attend South by Southwest for the last couple of years. Um, our, our conversation today, I want to talk about the role of conferences as a catalyst for innovation. And South by Southwest and also this event are very different than the typical kind of professional conferences of uh, for K-12 teachers or for sociologists or for engineers or anything else. They have a very different vibe, very different feel, and a very different mission. Let me begin, let me give you the opportunity for a little bit of shameless self-promotion about the history of the, the EDU part of South sure, by Southwest. Sure, sure. Just to frame us. Yeah, and I'll, I'll, I'll keep it brief, uh, but as you as you say, South by Southwest uh, actually celebrated its 30th birthday uh, with the music conference launched uh, that long ago, uh, several years after they added an a interactive festival and a film festival. And so the South by Southwest brand is really about creativity and innovation uh, um, and, and cultural drivers. And so um, it, the EDU piece we launched, um, I guess we just completed our sixth event, so it's been about that long. But uh, South by Southwest education, we really uh, hope and, and aspire to be an international convergence zone of folks who are passionate about teaching and learning. So we're not a membership-based org, uh, and uh, so a big part of our community comes from K-12, a uh, large segment from the higher ed sector, large community of uh, ed uh, business representatives, innovators, mostly startups, uh, although a number of legacy organizations there. Uh, another big segment of our community are nonprofits uh, and foundations who are actively engaged in the space. So we personally believe that the more um, uh, the more diverse the community we convene, uh, the more impactful the conversations. And that's sort of the, the history of South by uh, Southwest, uh, their music and film interactive. And now, uh, fortunately, I, I think the education conference we really see as an international convergence uh, event. Yeah, Ron, as I think about my experience at South by Southwest, one of the things that comes to mind is that a large part of it is a showcase. And it's in the, the words of the folks who are actually doing stuff. As opposed to people who are designing for others to do or for you. Is, is that a, a reasonable kind of characterization? Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah I, I, big, the, big practitioner. Big practitioner community of, of, of folks who are in those community school districts in the K-12 or uh, community colleges that might be in and around Austin or elsewhere who are coming to talk about what they've done as opposed to providers who are saying this is what we can offer. Mm. And that, that to me is a striking difference in terms of of, of of the messaging and and the, and the kind of the modeling for the conference as well. Yeah, I, I think that's right. Again, I, I you know I, I'm a I enjoy convenings. I think there are great power uh, in in convenings and uh, and assembling uh, passionate folks who share interests in common. And um, you know we uh, we're often compared with membership organizations, uh, and we have such respect for the work they do. They go much more granular when we think about the edu causes or ISTEs or other events like that, and they serve a powerful and fundamental purpose. You know, we aspire to do something something different, and that is, uh, you know, sort of knit together this broader coalition of, of stakeholders in the space, and, and we have a lot of fun doing that. But I think you also bring in some ways together a, a different kind of mix of stakeholders. Uh, you know, they, they are not all primarily from one particular, you know, they're, they're from education, but they're not from a particular silo in education. You know, the, it's not exclusively the tech community, as it might be a, an educause or ISTE or something else. Right. So, yeah. I think that's fair. Yeah. I, certainly it's our aspiration to, to do that. All right, so actually we've got an audience question. I'm going to just about read it out. Uh, you said, you know, as, as you think about over the years, can you point to one, two, three, four big wows in terms of the, the South by Southwest events? Uh -huh. uh, Gosh. This this was the year of X. This was the year of Y. This was the year something else happened, and and not just in and of itself, but something that then also, as we might say, had legs. Yeah. You can say two or three years later, not only did it launch, say like a movie that was might have been shown at the film side, but also then went on, went on to do good and great things. Yeah, I think I think first of all, there there are so many moments that we look back on and are very proud from a convening. Uh, we had the pleasure today to hear uh, Bill Gates speak, and sure. uh, we were fortunate to have. Uh, Bill is a keynote speaker many years ago, and we we certainly are, are excited to bring powerful voices to a community that's hungry to learn. Um, you know, the, 
the impact of convenings, I think, is a very, very personal uh, sort of experience in a fashion. And, and you know, there are a few stories we could tell, but we we know people come to these convenings for, you know, oh, two or three or more reasons. But among them, uh, again, in the education sector, we support a community of learners, and so this is professional development, and this is learning about. Uh, the uh, best practices in teaching and learning uh, new tools and strategies, et cetera, with it. Um, so the whole professional development and learning element is key. I think there's also a networking piece to that. I, I think, again, for me, the power of convening is, is, uh, is, is significant and substantial. And so mashing up folks who don't normally get to interact in the course of their professional day to day, we think introduces new ideas and ways of thinking. And so expanding one's personal network is a, a value of convening. You've diplomatically passed on the question I asked. Because oh, I, 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 can, so I want to come back. Can you point to a big wow in a particular last yeah. year or, or for this year? For yeah, example? actually, I'll, I'll point to one real yeah. quickly. Uh, we uh, had a, a, an invitation or a, a phone call from a new organization called EdTech Women. Mm -hmm. And they wanted to uh, convene women in the sector to support one another and beyond. And so we worked with them. Uh, they had a little inaugural dinner. I think it was South by EDU number two, perhaps. Um, and uh, and it, it exploded into really a movement uh, in the sense that I think today they've got state chapters all okay, over so, the place, so tens of thousands of members. So I can point to that and say, you from a platform, well, I, I don't really want to say I did anything other than the power of convening and right. creating a platform for these folks to yeah. come together. And that I look at with some, some okay. pleasure. That's yeah. a, I think that's a really good example. And, and in the context of convening, there's 3,500 people here. Uh, I spoke yesterday with Deborah Quazzo, and Deborah talked very pro with great pride about the effort they made for outreach to bring in some 500 school superintendents and others from K-12 and another 500 uh, community college presidents, college presidents, and others from higher ed because, as she described it, in the early years it was people talking about as opposed to talking with, and to mm -hmm. be that conversation about talking with. And yet I think for many of the folks out of education, K-12 and higher ed, uh, perhaps somewhat at South by West, perhaps South by South by Southwest EDU, and, and you know, perhaps even a little bit more so with this event, given that there's so much, uh, there's a significant corporate presence. Admittedly, we're sitting here in, a, in San Diego. Uh, it's nice, it's pleasant. Uh, that may seem to be you know, a huge distance from the challenges and the experience of many teachers and faculty members in schools and colleges. So the you know, the question becomes sort of the diffusion of the innovation. Diffusion of innovation conversation and the actual diffusion of innovation in terms of the convening, the legs and the process. And again, you know, usually think about the experience at South by EDU. Um, how does that happen? You know, where, where, how does the diffusion occur? Because I go back and I'm the catalyst, and then I bring others in, or, or how do others be able to tap into what happens if they're not physically able to be there? You know, a great example, and, and this is maybe, uh, I mean, as we sit here and, and chat and, and uh, distribute this uh, digitally, access is no longer exclusively defined by who is present in right. the space. And, and I should say, at the risk of shameless self-promotion for us, <laughs> this alliance with eCampus News and Shindig was really an effort to try to do some connection beyond San Diego to folks in schools mm -hmm. and colleges, and to bring some of the presenters and the participants directly out, either through the, the live conversations or the archives. So again, that, that connection at and after. Talk a little bit more about how that, that plays out at South by. Yeah, well, I, again, you know, I, I was talking about uh, reasons we think people come to uh, to events like ours to learn, to grow a network, and frankly, to be inspired. Yeah. Uh, and I, I think those are, uh, they vary on a personal basis, the impact of an event and how long they endure. Uh, you know, I'm under no illusion that um, South by Southwest EDU is, as a convener uh, is powerful, but we are not the, the practitioners in the school. We are not the implementers of that innovation. So our contribution is trying to help host and support that conversation. You know, how does innovation happen anywhere? I'm not sure I can really well define or describe you, you that in our short time together. Yeah, come on, <laughs> isn't it a 60 second response? Uh, I'm saying that with me your perspective, <laughs> having been well, to a few a lot, conferences. A lot of it is, is oh. a lot of it is, in fact, the networking. A lot yeah. of it is, I think, for me, visualization that I can see something and I can say, I can visualize that in my organization. Or I can visualize that for me. Yeah. And I think that the part of the challenge, particularly in tech conferences, nice turn on that, by the way, 
is that also it's, a, it's, it's traditional cognitive dissonance theory. I can do that to about 1.0 deviations of dissonance. If it's too far of a reach, then I can't do it. Yeah. But it so it's got to be an accessible reach. I, can I visualize myself doing that? Can I visualize myself or my organization being able to do that? Yeah. That's when it becomes effective. If it's just too far along, it becomes interesting. It becomes a, maybe a catalyst for conversation. But it's, again, because it's just too far, it's it's not accessible and not viable. Yeah, to, to your point, it, it's really those interpersonal connections, uh, the view of a colleague uh, who you've just met for the first time having great impact that uh, I think encourages us to own in, uh, our ability to innovate and to impact yeah. uh, on that. And so again, I think it's a very a very personalized experience, uh, but uh, but again, we, we, we take great pride and pleasure out of providing a safe, uh, a safe place of innovative ideas and conversations with a, a community that, again, I, I, we hope and aspire to having um, a, a, a group of, uh, around you that aren't normally part of your day to day. We yeah. think that adds great. I want to come back a little bit to the history yeah. of South by. We, we began with that and, and also the history of this conference. Deborah Quazzo yesterday, uh, Monday, when we spoke with her, you know, 300 people at ASU. What were the numbers the first year of South by EDU? Um, you know, the first year we launched South by Southwest EDU, we had expected maybe three or four hundred folks, um, but uh, it, it really took off quickly. Uh, it was, first of all, a regional event. It was Texas specific. It was sort of focused on K-12, which was sort of my comfort uh, at the, that point. So we had 800 registrants year one, which was wow. far and away yes. more than we had anticipated. Um, and, and uh, the second year of the event, we more than doubled to about 2,000. Uh, and uh, I think the next year, actually, Bill Gates was our keynote speaker that year. Mm -hmm. I think we grew from 2,000 to 4,000. And throughout that, began to look at really how to not be a regional K-12 conference, but really how to be a, an international learning conference, K-12 higher ed, so forth and so on with it. And uh, so that trajectory has continued. I, I think this year we had maybe 7,500 uh, registrants approximately for South by EDU. We also host a little free and open to the public thing, and, and we do so because we think ultimately education is local. This has to do with how dissemination or right. innovation occurs. It's what works in your school or on your campus. Uh, so we host a free and open to over the local community in Austin, and we had another I don't know, 65 or 7,000 students, parents. I, I remember uh, seeing a number of students both years you know, who yeah. clearly walking in groups and just sort of wow yeah. in terms of their own experience and watching a lot of this stuff. Indeed. Beyond the un beyond the numbers, how has the conference changed in, in terms of the organization, the structure? I, th I think it is. You know, first of all, we, we've got a, a tremendous resource behind us. Thirty years of South by Southwest right. is really. I mean, South by Southwest, including EDU, will host sixty thousand registrants, three hundred thousand guests in Austin, Texas, over a two week period. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll kick out over three hundred million in tax benefits to the local economy. We've sort of gone from rock and roll rabble rousers to right. esteemed citizens uh, in <laughs> Austin uh, now. Welcome to adulthood. <laughs> yeah, indeed, perhaps yeah. I'm not sure yet. Um, um, but I, I think our proficiencies as a large-scale event producer uh, have have grown and matured dramatically, and uh, and I get the benefit of all the learnings of 30 years of South by Southwest music and, and so forth on it. But I think we are most excited because the education element is the most rapidly growing component of South by Southwest. We we really think of of, of teaching and learning as increasingly a cultural conversation as opposed to an uh, an institutional discussion. That, uh, that feels authentic to us, and we feel that authenticity is compelling. Yeah. The, the comment I hear about, com about conferences like South by Southwest EDU and like this one is that they get to a particular size, and then whether it's folks who were there early or folks who were there in the middle years, all say, you know, it's just gotten to be a little too big and a little too unmanageable. And yet you can't close the door. You don't want to close the door. Um, how do you keep that sense of community in, in terms of the structure of the program? Or, is, or do you just let the community find its own? There's, there's a little bit of finding their own. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's sort of like there, there are so many conversations about personalizing learning, uh, and I'm uh, confronted by so many folks who tell, ask me, you know, what session should I go to? Right. It's sort of like there's this huge smorgasbord in front of you. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, I don't know what you, when you most recently ate, what you like, what you're right. allergic to. It's difficult for me to project for you what you should do yeah. at this event. Uh, this uh, this year we had Temple Grandin uh, mm -hmm. as our uh, opening speaker, 
and uh, it was uh, desired and, and appreciated on our part because it was a message of inclusiveness sure. uh, in, in regards to her message. But as I shared with the, uh, the community then, there's no right or wrong way to do South by Southwest EDU. Uh, I shared with them that it was, uh, it was like a river. Uh, you could drink from it a cup at a time, or you could dive in headfirst and deeply. And it's it's really a personalized experience. And we feel that again, as the event grows, that experience becomes richer. And there are more opportunities to connect with more people and and learn more things than uh, otherwise would be the case. Well, at the risk of pandering, as we close, let me say personally, it's a, it's a great experience. I've been fortunate enough to attend a couple of years, and it really is an engaging opportunity. As I, as I tell folks, we have more fun than the law usually allows, Casey. So. Well, I, I think, yeah, you may have the additional benefit, Ron, as I think about the calendar also. You're at the front end, so hopefully, you know, it's done. You get to go back to rock and roll and film, or, or do you have to keep working after everybody uh, our, else? Our team really works the whole two weeks. Of uh, it. I, right. I, as an old guy, get a little bit of a pass, <laughs> yeah. uh, although I still uh, still try to contribute right. through the way. Well, I hope you get to enjoy some of the music, and obviously you're in Austin. You get every, all the other parts of Indeed. the vibe in Austin. Great. Thanks very much for the conversation. Hey, Ron Reed is the executive it. producer of South by Southwest. He was the force behind creating South by Southwest EDU. Um, next in the chair will be John Wilson, who is the president of Morehouse College. We'll be right back, folks.